Welcome to Solid Rock, where we share truth, live grace, and grow together. Let's see what's going on. If this is your first time joining us, or if you would like us to pray with you or contact you, please fill out a Connect card located in the seat in front of you or online. Are you ready to take the next step in your walk with Christ? Then sign up to be baptized January 30th. Join us as 21 Days of Prayer continues Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. A new season of Freedom Groups begins soon. Get signed up today in guest information or on the church app. We are better together, so sign up and be part of a life group. You can sign up on the app or in guest information. Are you ready to volunteer at The Rock? You can sign up today for next steps in guest information or on the church app. Thanks for joining us today. If you would like to give to Solid Rock, you can do so by giving online, you can text to give, or you can drop off your giving at the receptacles at each door. Don't forget to download our app on iTunes or Google Play or follow us on social media. Let's stand and prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming this morning. Can you lift your hands and give God some praise? Lord, we thank you for your goodness unto us. We thank you for keeping us in good health.
many are going to worship him this morning? Give him the glory, give him the honor. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus. And I will worship you. I'll worship you. I won't hold anything back, but I will worship you. Jesus, you're wonderful. Come on, church, give him a hand clap. Come on, if you've you got one reason to worship him this morning. If there's one thing that he's done for you that's worthy of your praise today, somebody shout amen. Amen. He's done good things for me. Amen. If you want, if you want to have a seat for just a moment, I just got a couple of things I want to go over with you real quick. If you are here for the very first time, we want to say welcome to you. We're honored that you've decided to join us today. We've got lots of great churches here in town. We pray for them all the time. If they are preaching the name of Jesus and him crucified, then we want their doors to be overflowing. We want their finances to be unmeasurable. We want them to be successful because we're all in this together. Amen? But you decided to join us today, and we're grateful for that. So in the seat that's in front of you, we have a card that we call a Get Connected card. And uh, we know that you're not just a number. God had a reason for you showing up today. And so if you don't mind filling that card out, let us know how you found out about the church, whether it was online or a friend invited you or however it was. Um, let us give us your contact information. We'll keep you updated on everything going on here at The Rock, all the events that we've got coming up, some of the opportunities that we have, uh, a lot of uh, the parties and stuff that we have going on, the things in our services, the cool things about services that are coming up. It's kind of the keys to the kingdom. We'll get you signed up for that. We're not going to sell you anything, I promise. And, uh, but, but the most important part of that card is on the back of it. It's called a pr There's a prayer request section. And our staff every week, um, I know we say this every week, but it is a powerful and it's so important to us. We pray for over those needs every single week, whether it's a, a miracle you need in your life, whether a healing you need or uh, a, a marriage that just needs to be uh, worked on. Whatever your miracle is, whatever you need, we want to stand in, 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 in uh, power and prayer with you on that. Or if it's a celebration, we love to hear the celebrations too, the blessings. Amen. And if you're watching online, we want to say welcome to you as well. Uh, you can click on the link in the comments section uh, right below the screen there. It's uh, solidrockjc.com forward slash connect. You can go there, fill out the same exact card. Type it in the, in the chat there. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, raise your hands. Hallelujah. And uh, just praise and worship right wherever you are. Church, can we give our in-person visitors and online a big hand clap today? Come on. If you see somebody you don't recognize, just give them a wave, say hi, it's good to see you all, right, amen, good to see everybody. So, and just a couple of, we got, um, we have like a, a gauntlet, there's like three big days coming up. January 29th is the first one, everybody say the 29th. That's a Saturday, we're having a prayer team training. So this is anyone, you know, our dream team is all of the volunteers that make church services go on a Sunday. One of those sec segments is a, is a prayer team. It, you see some of them up here in the altars praying for folks after services, but it's not just about that. It's also people that intercede during services. They want to pray for our services, or you just want to pray for your church. You want to pray for our pastors. Maybe you're not a group prayer, but you'll sit at home for 30 or 45 minutes, and you'll pray for your church. Whoever you are, we're having a prayer training with Pastor J.D. Skiles right back here. Everybody say hi, J.D. Um, so that is January 29th from 10.15 to 11.30 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. You'll learn a little more about how to pray, the, the, pro the, the, the process of praying, the mindset of praying. That's going to be awesome. And then the next day on January 30th is our baptism service here at Solid Rock. Amen. I love our baptisms. Anybody gotten baptized here at the church? If you were baptized here at the church, amen. Lots of hands. Um, our our guest speaker was baptized here. He may need it again. I'm not really sure. But um, uh, there is no party like a baptism party at Solid Rock. Amen. So on January 30th, during our second service, that's our online service, the 10 a.m., this one right here, we will be baptizing people. If you want to get baptized, you've never been baptized before, but you want to, you can sign up on our Solid Rock app, um, on, 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 download it on your phone, or you can go out to our guest information and they will get you signed up out there as well. Baptism simply is an outward expression of what Jesus has done on the inside of you. Amen. It's the inward decision that you made and you're going to tell the world about that decision. Amen. And we would love nothing more than to celebrate with you on that day. And if that wasn't enough, then the very next day, January 31st on a Monday night, 
we are kicking off our next Freedom Group classes. Amen? Give our Freedom Groups a big hand clap. <clears throat> I love these classes. I've been through these a couple of times myself. And Freedom Groups, it's not just about getting freedom from addictions or hang-ups or mental issues. It, it's, it's really going deeper into the Word of God and really getting your mindset matched up and synced up with God's mindset. How does God see the world? How does God see people? How does God see me? Amen? And so if you want to go deeper in that, really, it's an awesome 13-week uh, study. It's, it's just kind of a class session. It's awesome. It meets every Monday night, I think, at 6.30. Is it 6.30? Yes. 6.30 that's right out these doors crossing the other building in our youth sanctuary. So I encourage you, if you haven't been through that yet, do it again. You can sign up on the app or you can go out to our guest information. Amen? Amen. That's all I got. I want you to stand for us. Uh, the one more thing we want to share with you, don't forget to support your church through your giving. Your church has been able to bless and minister to so many families throughout the holiday season. We bless churches in town. We are givers because we were given to. Amen? I don't know about you, but I was given a new name. Amen? So come on, church. Let's continue to worship. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but you brought me all his love for his love for who the sun sets free oh is free You are for 
Yeah. Give him a shout. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. Just say that out loud. I'm a child of God. One of the things I love about the disciple John in his writings, in his books, he always refers to himself not as John, not as John the disciple, but as John, or as the one whom Jesus loved. Because John, I always thought that was a little arrogant, but, but John knew his proper identity. Can I say it this way? He knew his, his more powerful identity. You know, the, the world tries to put names on you, tries to put labels on you. You're not an addict. You're not a recovering alcoholic. You're a child of God. You're the one whom Jesus loves, amen? You're not a divorcee. You're not unemployed. You are the royal priesthood, a peculiar people. One who Jesus has plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, if you will seek him, amen? I believe that today someone needs to exchange a passport that has some incorrect labels in it, some, some incorrect identities. Let's just close our eyes for just a second, whatever posture you feel is appropriate, and just make an exchange this morning. As we come into the presence of Jesus this morning, just leave all of those labels, all of those things at the door. Just let them fall off of you for a moment. Father, I'm declaring that someone's proper identity is bubbling up in their, in their stomach right now. And in their heart, they're feeling the incorrect labels falling off, throwing off that cloak which identifies them as blind, that identifies them as anything but a son or a child of God this morning. You're not a student. You're not a basketball player. You're a child of God. You're not a business owner. You're a child of God. And any position is inferior to that position. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me while I was yet a sinner. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in this holy moment, I never want to leave. Now I'm not here for blessings, it's Jesus, you don't owe me anything. There's more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Come on, he just wants you today. That's the irony. <laughs> and I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Come on, you just hit the re somebody just hit the reset button today. Like this was the first day. Come on. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. So take me back to where oh, I feel somebody going back to the first date. Come on, the first day you got saved. The first day you realized what your Savior had done for you. Come on, church. Come on. I'm caught up in your presence. Yeah. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. It's 
Jesus, you don't owe me anything. There's more than anything that you can do. And I just want you. Come on, let's sing that to him today. I just want you. And I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. And nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. And nothing else will do. Come on, church. And I just want you. <laughs> And nothing else, yes, Lord. there's nothing else, and nothing else. Come on, church, the irony is that's all he wants. He says, knock and I shall open that door. Seek and you're going to find me. Come on, sing to him. Come on, let him know you're here. Let him know you're knocking. Nothing else is going to do today, Jesus. Come on. Hey. And I just want you, and nothing else. And nothing else, and nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else, and nothing else, and nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your prayer. I'm just telling. I just want to sit here at your feet, caught up in this holy moment. Never want to leave. We're only here for you. I'm not here for blessing. Close your eyes. Worship Him. Jesus Come on, open your heart. Open your spirit up to what God wants to do in your heart and your life today. Father, we praise you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that is permeating this house right now. God, bring into subjection everything that would set itself against what you want to do in this house. I praise you for the presence of your power and for the Holy Spirit that destroys the yoke and removes the burden. Let that yoke-destroying, burden-removing presence of your power be upon every heart and upon every life. God, I'm going to thank you right now for what you are going to do in the remaining of this service how that you're going to touch lives and transform people and heal and bless in a way that you only can. God, even those who are watching online right now, may your presence, may your power, God, penetrate through the lens of these cameras and touch them where they are, that they experience, God, your glory. I praise you for what you're going to do, and I thank you, God, as we just enter into your presence because we just want to you hallelujah and we praise you in jesus name come on everybody let's lift his name up and praise him come on let's glorify him today hallelujah come on let's praise him with our best praise today blessed be the lord blessed be the lord blessed be the lord blessed be the lord man anybody glad we can feel the presence of god today his presence and power and i'm glad that you are here and before you see it, look at your neighbor and tell them, I don't care what everybody else in this church says about you. I like you. Tell them. Amen. Well, what a great day. What a great day. And we're so glad that you are here with us and so excited about what the Lord is going to do. And glad that you are here to worship the Lord with us. Now, at the conclusion of this service, please, nobody leave. I'm going to ask you to stick around long enough uh, until we're, we're going to be receiving an offering for our very, very special speakers who are with us today. 
and know that the Lord is going to minister to them, and we want to bless them because we love them. This is a couple that was here at this church when my wife and I got here in 1987, and um, they were sharing popsicles back then, uh, you know, Michael and Tara, and uh, sharing popsicles, and then they just start going out, start dating, and, and uh, wound up getting married, and, and uh, they've just been a blessing to this church, and they are out of this church. Um, they served here as youth pastors for over 14 years at this church and did such a great work and uh, just ministering to our kids. And, and, uh, and I remember, I remember right over here when the Lord gave me a word for Michael and uh, speaking to him about what the Lord was going to do and how God's hand was good upon his life. I have to be honest, he gave me nothing for Tara, just Michael, just Michael. And so, uh, I, 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 know that, I know that God has, has brought them here, and when I heard that they were going to be back here doing a wedding, I said, please speak for us, because uh, Michael hadn't spoke for us here at the church for quite a while. Of course, he's never asked me to ever come out and speak at his church, but that's another story. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I, I want you to join with us, and I'm going to have them come. Remember our 21 days of prayer? Tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, we're going to be right back here, and every morning at 6 o'clock... And to join us, if you haven't, just come and try it one time, and I know the presence of the Lord will touch you. And also, while you're praying, remove the Dallas Cowboys today in the playoff game. I'd appreciate it very much. Chiefs, do they still have a team? I, I didn't, okay. All right, all right, that's enough of that false prophecy and stuff that's going on at this church. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and my honor to turn the pulpit over to our guest speaker today. I'm telling you, he knocked it out of the park in the first service and did such a great job. Make welcome Michael Coling. I didn't tell him the pastor didn't be tired. He told me in the first service, he said, you got 10 minutes, you know. Hey, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, my wife, uh, my daughter Maddie is here. Uh, our family come up from West Plains. A bunch of our family here from Jefferson City to see us. And uh, I'm honored to see you today. I'm so grateful that you braved the cold. Amen. Came out and braved the ice. I'm so grateful that you braved all the COVID. And I'm really grateful that you braved all the Chads here on staff, Pastor Chad Pond and Pastor Chad Horton. Man, I'm telling you, God is, uh, God's going to bless you today because of that. And uh, so uh, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being here. I'm trying to look something up here. I'm not, I'm not texting somebody, I promise you. Uh, but I was, I was trying to look something up here. Uh, a young man. A young man calls a, calls a 911 operator. He says, uh, they said, 911, what's your emergency? He said, a guy just got hit by a car. He's laying out here in the street. I need somebody to come right now. She said, what is your location? He said, I'm on Eucalyptus Street. She said, can you spell that for me? There was a long, awkward pause, and he just kind of sat there for a minute. He said, she said, sir, are you still there? He said, you know what? I'm just going to drag him on over to Pine Street. Can you guys meet me over there? Is that going to be Okay. <laughs> Listen, we're honored and privileged to be here. We're so grateful. This is home to us. I, I've been, I was saved in this church, called into the ministry, filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, saved and committed my life to Christ right over in this area. It's a special area to me. Uh, baptized in this tank uh, back here behind me several times. I needed a, a few dippings, okay? Some of you guys got it on the first round. I, I was unable to do that. But I'm so honored to be here with you and, and so grateful that, uh, that God would bless us and strengthen us and, and and uh, some people ask me about this. If you're, if you're curious about us, we're in Ukiah, California. This March, we will launch our eighth year out there. Uh, my wife and I, we've been married 27 years. Amen. So grateful uh, for her, for our daughter Maddie. Uh, she's 11. Our boys, they are uh, Alec, and, uh, Alec and Chase. And then we've got a bonus kid. You guys remember Del Vaughn. He's one of our bonus kids. And, and, uh, uh, but our kids, our grandkids are here today. And so we're so grateful to have all of you guys. And you're in a series here at Solid Rock Family Church. Uh, and, the, and the series name is called Let's Talk. Everybody say Let's Talk. Let's talk. So this morning, if you have your Bibles, you could turn to Revelation chapter 22. It's the very last chapter in the Word of God. The very last chapter in the Word of God. Very easy to find, very easy to get to, okay? 
and in the book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. And uh, as we get there, I'm so grateful that our pastors are here. Pastor and Sister Skiles, they are family to us and uh, spiritual parents to us. And I can't imagine, uh, I, I can't imagine how they feel they, they, they have. They've seen us grow up. They, they saw Tara and I date and get married. And Pastor did all those things, performed all those great, uh, you know, pastoral duties in our lives. And uh, prayed for us and ministered to us and has guided us and encouraged us through the process. And we are so grateful for your pastors. Will you give them a hand of appreciation, all of them, all your pastors on staff. <clears throat> we appreciate them so very much. Revelation 22 and verse 12. This morning we're going to talk about the welcome mat. Everybody say the welcome mat. We're going to talk about the welcome mat. Look at verse 12. The Bible says, look, I'm coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes who, or who are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what that's talking about. Anybody saved in the house? Anybody committed their lives to Christ? Amen. That's what it's talking about. It says, blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city, talking about heaven, and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright and morning star, Jesus says. And then verse 17, he goes on to speak and he says, The spirit and the bride say, come. Everybody say, come. It says, let anyone who hears this say, come. Say it one more time. Come. Let anyone who is thirsty let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. So point number one for all you amazing note taker type people, okay? All you brainiacs in the house, you smart ones. That's me. Okay, I'm in that, I'm in that crew. Or I like to think that I'm in that crew. I try to be in that crew, right? The first point that I have for you this morning is come. Everybody say come. And when we look at this and we see this, this is such a powerful, encouraging thing that some of the very last words that Jesus were to give us in Scripture were come. It's some of the very last words that we read from God's Word. And verse 17, I, I love this because both the Spirit of God and the bride, the global church, extend the invitation to the entire world to come to Jesus and experience the benefits of salvation. Now, I hope my I hope my kids forgive me. Chase, Amber, thank you for letting me steal your welcome mat, okay? I don't know that they're aware, but I stole your welcome mat, and here it is. I, I want us to have a mindset as the church. I want us to see what it is. I believe that God is saying to us, a welcome mat is, is simply that. It's to make people feel welcome. Amen. It's to make people feel welcome. You ever been to somebody's house and, you know, it's, it's kind of all roughed up and you can't really tell what it says? You know, it might just say, well, you know, and you're like, I'll tell you, well, you need a new welcome mat. That's what you need, right? Or maybe it's rubbed off on the other side. It just says come. Or maybe it's rubbed off on both sides and it just says me. Do you, you know, you just kind of rub it so hard, you know, whatever. But I, I want to help you this morning, guys. Your wives have set this out for you to wipe your feet on, praise God. Amen, the welcome mat, right? But a welcome mat is meant to make you feel welcome. And a lot of times it might not mean what we say. You know, you ever been to somebody's house and uh, you don't feel welcome? Anybody there? Don't point at anybody. Don't look around right now, okay? Just stay in the safe zone with me, right? But I, I want to tell you that when you only concern yourself with yourself, that makes you one thing, selfish. Praise God. And I would venture to say that the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ probably didn't happen on a day that was most convenient for him. I know it wasn't a death that Jesus would have chosen to suffer or any of us would have chosen to suffer. So when you throw out the welcome mat, we've got to understand that ministering to people is inconvenient. It's inconvenient at times. And it's so vital that we represent and that we as the global church, as Christ followers, that we live a clear message. Because either the lost and the broken and the confused and the sinful are welcome here and welcome into our lives and welcome into our relationships, or they're not. 
Amen. They're either welcome or they're not. Well, I want you to see this in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple. Jesus wants you to follow him and be his disciple. Somebody say a good amen right there. So Matthew got up and followed him. Jesus is calling. Are you listening and are you responding? Amen. Are you listening and are you responding? So watch this in verse 10. I love this. Matthew, verse 9, Matthew got up and he began to follow Jesus. And later that night, Matthew, or later, it, it, later in time, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable people. Disreputable people, Chad Pond type people. Come on, somebody, if you can hear what I'm saying. Pastor Chad type people. Amen. So disreputable sinners, right? And it says in verse 11, but when the Pharisees saw this, they asked Jesus' disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? Not Pastor Chad, but you know, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Amen. Amen. Then he added to all of the Pharisees, he said, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy. Oh, that's good. I could stop right there and quit. I'm not going to, but I could stop right there and quit. He said, I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices, for I've come not to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners. Praise God. Amen. I know that I need him. I know that I'm inept without him. I know that I'm lost, headed off to a devil's hell without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart and upon my life. Somebody say a good praise God. Out there now in verse 11 when the religious people saw this now the unthinkable begins to happen they begin to think well Jesus associates with such people he must be just like them the Pharisees equated consecration by location if I just stay away from the bad people I stay away from the bad things. I'll keep away from the sin in my life or the sin around, uh, around my heart and in, and in that space. That's not how this thing works, praise God. The only thing that united the Pharisees was their lack of mercy. They were together in this negative space. They were together in this destructive space. And I call them critics, commentators, complainers, and gossips. Amen? Do you know what critics, commentators, complainers, and gossips do for the kingdom of God? Absolutely nothing. That's exactly what they do for the kingdom of God. You, 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 you've seen those people. They just want to tear people down. I don't get online and talk bad about people. I don't get online and trash talk other pastors or other ministers. I don't trash talk people and say, I can't believe you. I can't believe all these kind of. I'm going to be somebody who builds people up and speaks, li- speaks words of life. Amen. I'm going to speak words of life. And so they're doing nothing for the kingdom of God. And I don't want to be those kind of people. They're doing nothing for the cause of Christ. And if the global church isn't careful, if we're not cautious and compelled to change, we could end up the same exact way. Just kind of a religious mindset. Just kind of a gossiping kind of mindset. Well, I'm better than him, not better than her. I got a better attitude and a better spirit, praise God. But Jesus shows up in this parable and reclining with some really bad people. Amen? He's completely okay with being seen in the company of these infamous, notorious sinners. Can I tell you something this morning? There's healing in hospitality. Amen? There's hope in hospitality. Amen? I've been to restaurants before because their service was so good. I was like, I'm going back. Their food's terrible, but their service was awesome. And then I've been to some really amazing, great restaurants. I love the food so much, but their service is so terrible. I don't ever go back. I've been to places that people have treated me bad. They say, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I just walk out, praise God, because they're, they're, it's so bad. Well, Jesus chose to eat with such scum. 
Jesus chooses to hang around with such scum. He chooses to invest in such scum, knowing this way was this was the only way to invest and, and, and influence such scum. How do I know? Because I'm such scum. Praise God. And he loved on me and he's encouraged me. And, and I know a lot of us, we, we say, well, I'm a Christ follower and I gladly hang out with those people, but they've got to change this. They got to change their mouth. They got to change their attitude. They got to change their spirit before they get my friendship. Amen? I'm guilty. I'm absolutely guilty, 110% of thinking that and saying that and doing this very actual point. Point number two this morning, throw out the welcome mat. Not into the trash can, praise God, but throw it out into the lives of those people around and about you. It looked as if Jesus might have hurt his reputation when he was spending time with Matthew. Matthew was a thief, and Matthew was a tax collector, and Matthew was a cheat, and Matthew was a liar. Come on, can you hear what I'm saying to you this morning? He's cheating the people, but Jesus' love and mercy changed him. He said, hey, be my disciple and follow me. You're welcome to follow me. You're welcome to leave this mess and follow me. And, and, and we see this and we understand this and, and we should not be afraid to reach out to people living in sin because God's message can rescue and change anyone, praise God. Hallelujah. We can't just be the kind of people that just run around and I throw out the welcome mat to Pastor John this week and he's my friend and I love him. I throw out the welcome mat to him and then next Sunday he loves me so much and, and, and he's encouraging me so much and he throws out the welcome mat to me and we continue that beautiful little gesture all the way to heaven. God wants you to recline with some notorious sinners. Hello? God wants to encourage you, and I want to tell you something. God has called me. He's designated me. He's designed me. He's destined me to throw out the welcome mat to all people. That's what Scripture teaches us to do. And that's the whole reason that Jesus came to, in, came to this earth was to invite all people into his family. John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world, he, he sent Jesus. Jesus came. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world world through him might be saved hallelujah throwing out the welcome mat is a price we all must be willing to pay he's given every one of us that mission praise God now I don't know about you but I've never went to a home that had a welcome mat on it that had this big paragraph on it right they show up hey take off your hat take off your shoes no cussing in my house, no cussing around my kids. As a matter of fact, no cussing within 500, uh, 500 feet of the premises. Hello? No smoking, no drinking, no cussing, whatever. All, all these kind of lists and rules, right? And, and finally, if you, and no nasty jokes. And finally, if you don't know Jesus, you might meet him face to face if you make me mad. Now, don't look now, but I know some Christians that way. <laughs> now, did Jesus... Did Jesus live his life a different way towards lost people? Absolutely not. He loved every person exactly the same. Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and forever, Scripture says. And Jesus' life, his message to sinners is come. Just come. You're welcome here. Pull up a chair. Let's hang out. Amen. And then Jesus' very first next move is not, you guys get him here, you guys pull up a seat, let's get here together, let's recline back together, then I'm going to preach to him. That's not what Jesus does. He just says, come. You're welcome here. You're welcome in my space. And I love this because Jesus is loving them. And Jesus is sitting there listening to them. I can see him right now leaning in to hear the story about your children, to hear the story about your sickness, to hear the story about your disease and your suffering. I see him living in that way. And Jesus is with them. He's not condoning their lifestyle, but he's sincerely and compassionately loving them. You remember when he spoke to the adulterous woman, he told her, he said, I love you. I don't condemn you, so go and sin no more. Jesus wasn't speaking of sinless perfection. We are unable to be perfect. 
were unable to be perfect. But Jesus was warning them against a return to that sinful lifestyle choice. And his words to each and every one of us, they extend mercy, but they also demand holiness from our lives, holiness from our thinking, holiness from the way that we love and, and encourage those around and about us. Because Jesus is always the perfect example of grace and truth. Somebody shout a good amen right there. Hallelujah. Grace and truth. Matthew 11 and verse 28, you remember Jesus said, come unto me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I, what will I do? I'll give you rest. I will give you rest. So point number three, now Jesus says come. So if Jesus is saying come and Jesus is throwing out the welcome mat, my desire is to be Jesus. He, he is my, he's the exemplary life that we are trying to follow. Come on, somebody, amen. Now I love this. Point number three, Jesus says come. Now Jesus doesn't say come to me after you. Jesus does not use the phrase come to me if you. Come to me when you. He just says come. He didn't say, come to me after you've spent uh, 12 weeks here at the church and then you go through growth track. Amen, I love the processes. I'm not mad at the processes, but he just says, come, follow me, be my disciple, right? What would happen to a community that preached what Jesus preached? What would happen to a church? What would happen to a ministry or a people that lived what Jesus lived? A message so strong, so powerful, yet so simple as the word Come. Come and be a part of who we are. Come and be engaged in what we're doing. And I submit to you today that we need to throw out the welcome mat in our lives. We need to throw, the, throw out the welcome mat in our workplaces. We need to throw out the welcome mat in our homes. We need to throw out the welcome mat in our church. You are welcome here. Come on, somebody. You are welcome here in my space. You are welcome here at the house of God. You're welcome in my heart. You're welcome in my life. You're welcome in my relationships. You can't stay forever. Come on. But you're welcome here. Amen. Jesus gives us the essence of evangelism, the essence of our mission. Amen. Amen. You're welcome wherever it is that I go. And the bride, the church is an imagery. It's a depiction of the, uh, of, the, of the church, local and global. Praise God. And don't you dare tell me that you're a part of the global church if you are not a part of the local church. God needs you in his house. God needs you throwing out the welcome mat. God needs you on team. God needs you on board somebody. Amen. Needs you serving. Jesus died and he gave himself for the church. You say, Pastor Mike, can you prove that? I can. Psalm, 90, Psalm chapter 92 and verse 13. Watch this. Those who, are, those who are planted in the house of the Lord our God shall flourish in the courts of our God. When you are planted, come on, you'll find flourishment. You'll, you'll grow, you, the Bible says that you will grow uh, fruit in every season. Your leaves will never wither. Come on, somebody. It, it, you'll never fade because God is moving in there, in, in your heart and in your spirit. The church is God's house. The church is a place where someone knows your name and knows when you've not been there. Where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. Anybody want to watch Cheers? Let's just stop this. Let's, let's watch this. <laughs> Pastor Mike, what in the world is Cheers? Forget about it, okay? Just forget about it. Listen, God's house is a place. Somebody knows who you are. Now, now some of us, come on, somebody, some of us need to hear this. You need to stop coming late and leaving early. Oh, oh, I'll shake it one more time. Come on, I'll shake it one more time. You need to stop. You need to stop coming late and leaving early and thinking, well, I just don't have any friends there. The reason you don't have no friends is because you don't show up a little early and stay a little bit late. Right, Amen. Just, a, just an old pastor just trying to do his job. Come on. But this is who we are. As the global body, we're throwing out the welcome mat. We're making people feel welcome. Singularly and collectively. Every time you open the doors of this house up together, 
We ought to have invites. There ought to be people. These are my friends. I love this. I like meet some new friends, and I bring them over. Hey, I want you to meet my other friends, and I want you to come over here and meet my other friends. And that's how you connect people. Praise God. It's our way. This is our way. This is our why. Point number four. Notice the spirit in the church say simultaneously and in stereo. Come. We're doing this with the spirit of God. Amen. We're coupled together. We're on mission together. We're on purpose together. We're on team together. Now, I saw this in Revelation 22, and I want you to pay attention to who we are saying come to, right? Some really bad people, as a matter of fact, just so we're clear. I just want you to be 110% clear who we're inviting into our world and into our relationships, into our church, into our lives, Verse 17 in Revelation 22 is preaching to verse 15. It's speaking to verse 15. And verse 15 says, outside the city are dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. Listen, the language is on purpose. God has chosen this language in scripture on purpose. Not just people outside of those walls. Outside the walls of heaven will be people who are the worst of the worst. Outside fellowship will be people who are the worst of the worst. Outside belief are people, you see. And he says, not just people who lie, but people who love to lie. Now don't don't look around, stay in the safe zone with me. You may know somebody. Amen. I, we, we had this friend of ours, every time he was talking, you knew he was lying. You knew he was lying. That didn't happen. You know, he says, that, didn't, that ain't true. That didn't, I was there, man. That didn't happen, right? Individuals. How about this one? Individuals with no sexual moral compass. How about this one? Hey, hey, I put a spell on your family. Cool, man. Come on in. You're welcome here. Right? Hey, I killed a man. Hey, as a matter of fact, we want you to sit over here. <laughs> Just got a special seat for you, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a, I'm sorry. It's a six by six cage. You know, I mean, uh, we we don't we don't want to treat you any any kind of way, right? But uh, you you think about this. Hey, I pray to inanimate objects. Cool. You're welcome here. Listen, I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. I'm going to love on you, and I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to pull up a chair. I'm going to reside next to you. Praise God. And this is a great message until people start responding to it. Hold on just a second. You, man, we're throwing out the welcome sign. We're loving on everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Hold on a second. We weren't talking to you. You're different. Whoa, you're way different than us. You're from California. You're way different than us. You're not welcome here. Hello. We wasn't talking to you. This sounds great as a sermon, but not as a lifestyle. Listen, in 1 Timothy, I can, I can name it all through Scripture, but I'm just going to give you a few. 1 Timothy chapter 3, the whole, cha- the whole book of Acts, uh, every chapter, and in the book of Titus chapter 1, the Bible says us as Christ followers, we are leaders in the kingdom of God, and that people ought to be welcome into our hearts, welcome into our homes. We ought to be breaking bread with them and discipling them and loving on them. That's what Scripture teaches us. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, amen. And I refuse to be a preacher that doesn't hang out with sinful people. That's why Pastor Chad Horton is one of my great friends. Listen, I live my life with the welcome mat thrown out to everyone. I love this. I live my life in that space. You're welcome here. How can I help you? How can I serve you? Oh, let me take it all Chick-fil-A on you. It would be my pleasure. Inviting them to dinner. Inviting them into my life, making them friends, helping them know that I care about them. I care about their children. I care about their health. I care about their financial situation. It will definitively relate to them how much I care about their eternity because I care about the individual and I'm caring about the person. And we need the global church of the Lord Jesus Christ to have that in their hearts and to have that in their spirits. Hallelujah. All people. We've lost the welcome of heaven. Amen. I want to be the kind of Christian that when people are around me, they say, hey, there's something different about that. 
There's something different about that family. There's something different about their heart. There's something different about the, 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 their hospitality spirit. There's something different about them. Look at Psalm chapter 51 and verse 12. The Bible says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Do you see that in verse 12? Listen, if we have that kind of joy, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm glad to be blood blood bought, fire baptized. Come on, somebody, anybody excited about that? I'm glad to be going to a place called heaven. Amen. And it says, it says this, when you've got that kind of relationship with God, you can't wait to obey God, to walk in the purposes of God. Why? Why do we want to do all those things for verse 13? So I can teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. I'm calling them out from the north and the south and the east and west. Every son, every daughter of God, back into God's kingdom, back into his purpose, back into relationship with him. Hallelujah. Point number five, I've only got two more. I won't keep you all day. There's, I, I, I understand this. There's a, there's a fine line between keeping you all day in a hostage situation. <sighs> Point number five. The spirit cannot say come without the bride. This is powerful. If the message is going to be heard, it's going to be because we, the people, we value the word of God and we value the house of God because it means something to us. For the spirit of God will not preach without the church. The Bible says no man comes unto the Father unless he is drawn by the spirit of God. So it's imperative that the people of God are filled with the spirit of God and that we're speaking the message of God. Amen. It will not because God partners with mankind. God is waiting on you. God needs you to speak up and to speak out. Come on, somebody. And I want to tell you this. I want, I want to say this to you. The kingdom is the cause. The church is the vehicle people are the mission say it with me this morning the kingdom is the cause the church is the vehicle and people are the mission can you give the children of God a hand clap of praise this morning a hand clap of encouragement we love you here we welcome you here spirit cannot say come without the church and in all of our innovation, and in all of our methods, and all of our new ways and thoughts and ideas and creativity and technology, it means nothing without the Spirit of God. We need the Holy Spirit because our message is hollow and our message is shallow and our message is lifeless and empty without the Holy Spirit of God whose job it is to reveal Jesus to the people. Hallelujah. That's what scripture teaches us. So because we minister in that way, because Jesus is our strength and Jesus is our source and Jesus is our power and Jesus is the voice to our souls. I don't know about you, but our church out there, Legacy, Legacy Ukiah dot church, we've got nothing else but Jesus. We're not going to preach anything but Jesus. We're going to preach about his grace and we're going to preach about his love and we're going to preach about his sacrifice. We're going to preach about his death and his virgin birth and his life and his burial, his resurrection and his salvation and the Holy Spirit and we're going to preach about life and life more abundantly it's all we've got to say that's the only thing that we have is come come unto God come and find Jesus I don't have all the answers but I know someone who does Jesus has all the answers for your heart. He's got all the answers for your life you are welcome here in the space of the Lord Jesus hallelujah and finally Point number six, scripture says anyone come. Anyone come. Jesus says anyone. Anyone who is able to come, let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. As the worship team is coming, can I say something to you as a people? Can I say something to you as a child of God? Maybe you're trying to be a child of God. You want to be a child of God. Can I help you understand something this morning? Your redemption is purchased. Your approval is purchased. God, this is God's word to you, not, not, not my word to you. You are mine. 
I have called you. I have chosen you. Take freely of belonging. Take freely of the salvation that I've made possible unto you. And if we're going to preach Jesus and we're going to preach the gospel, then we have to remember what the gospel is all about. It's about coming freely to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about coming freely and receiving what Jesus has already paid for. Take freely. No cost. No payment. Necessary. The price has already been paid. Take freely of the promises and the privileges of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sometimes we as the church, we kind of get caught in a tight space. Somewhere between freely receiving and freely giving, there's a disconnect. We start to try to charge people for what it is we received freely. Amen. Amen. You got to stop doing this. We tell people like, listen, I want you to go to church with me and I want you to go up in there, but we got to just change a few things about your character and then you can go on up in there with me. Then you can be seen with me. Right now, we're just kind of underground friends. We don't really say this to them. We just do this. We're just kind of underground friends, you know. Once you get some things together, man, we're going to, you can sit by me. Then you're welcome. Amen. We get your mouth straight. We get your attitude straight. We get your hair, lack of hair straight, whatever that it is. Amen. Then you're in my heart. Then you can be in my life. And and you better not do these kinds of things. We're going to get up into the house of God together one of these days. But right now, we got to work on you before we go up in there. Amen. Got to walk out this step. You're going to have to jump through this hoop. And our message goes from come or welcome to commandments. Come, commandments. It's close, undeniably close, but we've got to let the gospel be the gospel and stop adding some trinkets and some ploys or some toys because that's just too easy. And so as Christ followers, sometimes we get ridiculous and we get religious and we get confused. Listen, the scripture says it's so simple that a child can understand it. Hallelujah. Jesus says, come. Come with all of your baggage. Come with all of your fears. Come with all of your insecurities. Come with all of your anxieties. Come with all of your hurts and your habits and your hang-ups. Come with all of your sin. Come with all of your rebellion and disobedience. Just come. Would you just come? And Jesus, speaking to us today, he said, hey, red or yellow, black or white, would you just come? Would you come unto me? You labor, you're, you're heavy, you're, you're, you're laden with guilt and you're laden with fear and you're laden with all of these burdens. Will you come to me because I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Can you give him a hand clap of praise this morning in the house? Will you stand with me all over the building? As our prayer team comes, You say, Pastor Mike, I don't know Jesus as my Lord. I don't know him as my Savior. I know that he's chosen me. But today I want to take a moment and choose him. I I need to take this moment. I need to take this step in my own heart. I need to take this step in my own life. If that's you this morning, would you just slip your hand up? Pastor, I I I don't know Jesus as my Lord. I don't know him as my Savior. I need to meet him today. I want to say yes to Jesus. Can I just, can you just raise your hand? Just slip your hand up. Say, that's me, Pastor. I want to know Christ as my Savior this morning. I want to know him in a deeper relationship. I want to know him in a deeper way. If that's you this morning, can I just see your hand? Say, that's me, Pastor. Listen, right there where you're standing, you can say yes to Jesus. You can call upon his great name. The Bible says that when you call, he will listen. When you call, he will answer. If you're standing, you're standing there, maybe you're, maybe, for any reason, you need prayer, and, and you want to come to the front, you say, Pastor, I need to come to the front. I, I, my heart has not been welcoming. My spirit has not been welcoming. Pastor, I've tried to make it about other things rather than the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, or rather than just loving on people and welcoming people, and you need special prayer for any reason. Our prayer team is here. They would love to pray with you. They would love to encourage you. They would love to lay hands on you and strengthen you. I 
challenge you to come right now. I challenge you to find a place to pray, to say, you know what, God, I need to make a moment between you and I. I need to make it right. I need to do this right now in my heart and in my spirit. In the name of Jesus, would you come? Would you come with all your fears? Would you come with all your insecurities, all your drama? Would you come with all your stereotypes? Would you come to Jesus? Would you take a moment to love on him? Come on, slip your hands up right there where you're at. In the name of Jesus. Hey, extended family, Solid Rock family, thank you for joining us today. What a service. We pray that you were ministered to and God blessed you just like he blessed us. And if you're here for the first time, if you just found us, uh, you're new to Solid Rock, we want to know about you. We want to know how we can be praying for you, how you found out about us. Uh, if you don't mind going to solidrockjc.com forward slash connect and fill out our Get Connected card. We want to know about you. We don't want you to just be a number. And more importantly, if you made a decision for Jesus today for the very first time, we want to celebrate with you. You just made the most important decision of your life, but it's only the first step. So what's the next step? Well, we have a resource for you that we want to get into your hands to celebrate with you and to help you with that next step. Again, if you can go to solidrockjc.com forward slash connect, we would love to know that you made a decision for Jesus and we'll get that resource into your hands hand. Thank you so much for joining us today. We believe that God is going to continue to minister to you and we will see you next time right here.